I decided to be confirmed in the Episcopal Church my senior year of college and go to seminary. For a year, I was the Episcopal chaplain at the University of Vermont. Perhaps a month after I had been in Burlington, I met Boo. I think she just came to church. And there was this new young uh, chaplain in training, and within 10 minutes, I was smitten. He was so smart and so clear and had such faith. We just sort of hit it off early on. I shared with her the serious relationships that I'd had had been with men and that I'd been in therapy for a year, twice a week to sort of cure myself. And I remember saying to her, I'm scared to death that this homosexual thing could rear its ugly head. I felt like he loved me enough so that it wouldn't matter and that our love could triumph over that. We both just wanted it to work so much. And so then they married. We had a big... Big to do. Big to do. <laughs> Some friends built a dance floor and the fire department did a big chicken barbecue and I was just so in love. And it was just really a very festive, great time. All through the Bible, we know that procreation is one of the reasons that God put Adam and Eve together. Adam and Steve and Eve and Jane can't procreate. It is an act of abomination. That's what the Bible says, and that's what I believe. I have to go with what the Bible say. I have to. And the Bible say it's, it's an abomination. It ain't necessarily so. It ain't necessarily so. The things that you libel to read in the Bible it ain't necessarily so. What do you think the Bible says about homosexuality? Well, it's, it just says simple. If a man don't lay with another man, or not a woman not with another woman. It's in the King James Bible that, that homosexuality is a sin, as it is in the Catholic Bible. In the New Testament, I don't think Jesus mentions it anywhere. He doesn't say anything about it. In Romans, it's very clear that God says it's unnatural. I know the Bible says it's wrong. You know, I go on faith that, yes, it's the Word of God. That's kind of what I've been taught and what I believe. So I don't, like, analyze it as deeply as some other people do. I've read snippets. I've believed from, you know, what right-wingers are saying in terms of what the Bible says on homosexuality. But in terms of what I know and what I've read, I haven't actually read it. When people ask questions about homosexuality, almost always they follow with, and what does the Bible really say about it? There are about six or seven verses in all of Scripture that speak to even remotely what we might call uh, homosexual activity or homosexual uh, conduct. In this particular one, it's Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. It says, If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If you read the Bible on a face value level, that reading disregards several very important things. The first one is just a few verses before that. Moses teaches in Leviticus that it is an abomination to eat shrimp. A few verses above and below, it says you shouldn't plant two different seeds in the same hole. You shouldn't commingle your crops. It is an abomination to eat a rabbit. There's other law that says you shouldn't wear linen and wool together. They are failing to read the Bible within the context of its authors and of its original culture. The Bible is the word of God through the words of human beings speaking in the idiom of their time. And the richness of the Bible comes from the fact that we don't take it as literally so, that it was dictated by God. To just pick out this is the one that we're going to follow, the Bible doesn't come that way. It's selective reading. When the term abomination is used in the Hebrew Bible, it is always used to address a ritual wrong. It never is used to refer to something innately immoral. Eating pork was not innately immoral. 
for a Jew, but it was an abomination because it was a violation of a ritual requirement. Those biblical laws, they're known as the Holiness Code. There were laws that were supposed to help people at that time find holiness.